Today I will review some very interesting EGs. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start with a very basic EG. What do you see here? Something to pay attention to is these are eye blink artifacts. So let me draw some of those here. So this is the eye blink artifact. So this is a eye blink artifact. So these artifacts that you see here, so I'm just drawing on top of those. These are eye blink artifacts. These are typically seen in FP1 and FP2. So those are the two contacts that are closest to your eyeballs. And when a person blinks their eye, the cornea gets closer to FP1 and FP2. If you recall the Bell's phenomena, Bell's phenomena is when a person closes the eye, the eyeballs roll upwards. The eyeballs have a polarity. So the cornea is relatively more positive than retina. And therefore, when a person closes the eye or blinks the eye, the eyeballs roll up. So, F, uh, so positivity gets closer to FP1 and FP2. And therefore, you see a downward deflection. So one, and so you see a downward deflection com when you're comparing FP1 and F3, which means that there is a relative positivity at FP1. And same thing you see on FP2. So if you look at FP2 here, you see a downward deflection in relation to F8. And downward deflection on the first channel denotes positivity in this contact. So let's move on. Let's, uh, you can take a piece of paper and write down your impression. This is, this is generalized frontally dominant spike and wave discharges. The maximum amplitude, if you reconfigure this EEG on an average reference, you will find that the maximal amplitude, it is F3 and F4. This is you typically in patients who have generalized spike and wave discharges, that's where you have uh, the maximal amplitudes. This pattern has a strong association with generalized epilepsies. So epilepsies, just to remind you, if a seizure starts from one focal area, you call those as focal onset seizures. And if both hemispheres, if the networks involve both hemispheres simultaneously, you have a generalized spike and wave discharge. So it is spike and wave that is seen very symmetrically between the two epilepsies can be treated with many medications, but valproic acid is one of the most effective medications for treating generalized epilepsies. It is limited because of some of the potential teratogenic side effects of valproic acid. And of course, before you start anyone on valproic acid, if you're a physician, you need to go over the risks versus benefits. If you are a patient, you may want to discuss the risks versus benefits of starting valproic acid or any other medication when it is prescribed to you. Now, this is a normal EG. So in a normal EG, you can see that the odd numbers on the channel. So here are some of the odd numbers here. Odd numbers are recording from the left side of the brain. The channels that end with an even number, so which is these channels here, these are recording from the right side of the brain. Each green line, so this is one of the green lines, this is another green line, is separated by one second. If you count the number of waves in the occipital head region, so occipital is O1 and O2, you can see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there are 10 waves in one second. So this is a posterior dominant alpha rhythm with symmetric distribution between O1 and O2, meaning between the left and the right hemisphere. When you are reporting an EG, make certain that you're also reporting the ECG. So you want to check if the ECG shows what is the rate on the ECG. You want to see whether it's a regular rhythm or not. Okay. Of this is another example of generalized spike and wave discharge. So these are the spike and wave discharges that you see here. Just on, you can see the spike and wave on multiple channels over here as well. So these are the spike and wave discharges. 
which have a strong association with generalized epilepsies. This is a very nice view taken from the Canadian Rocky Mountains. So if you're ever in Alberta, Canada, make sure you do visit Canadian Rocky Mountains, one of the most beautiful parts of the world. This EEG shows uh, a sleep state and what you're seeing here, these are sleep spindles. So these are sleep spindles. When you see sleep spindles on an EEG in a person who's sleeping, this signifies stage two sleep. So the two defining features of stage two sleep, number one, sleep spindles, number two, K complexes. What you see here is an onset of a seizure. Now, I would suggest you note that there are eye blinks. These are eye blink artifacts. These are, you remember we discussed that? So eye blinks precede this seizure onset. So this is the seizure onset right here. We do not see any focal onset. We do not see the electrographic seizure starting from one spot. But what we do see is these eye blink artifacts or sort of eye movement artifacts or these are artifacts from the, coming from the eyes. Patients who have occipital lobe seizures sometimes will have rapid eye blinking before they go into a seizure. So could this be a generalized seizure? possible that we don't see any focal onset but could this be a seizure starting from the occipital lobes that is something to seriously consider you may want to ask a patient if they see any flashing lights before they go, before they go into a seizure do they have any visual distortions before they go into a seizure or you may ask family members if this person has a lot of eye blinking before the seizure rapid eye blinking gives me a clue that this could potentially be an occipital lobe seizure. This is the other, this is the end, other half of the seizure and you can see that the seizure ends right here. So this is where the seizure ends and following the end of the seizure you can see a suppression of the amplitude. So if somebody has a generalized seizure, so it can happen with focal seizures as well, often you may see a suppression, meaning the amplitudes are significantly decreased uh, after the seizure is over. Now, what do you see here? This is another example of a seizure from occipital lobe. So you can see these spikes, the seizure starts here. You're seeing both O1 and O2 that are involved. If a seizure starts close to the midline, sometimes, especially for occipital lobe seizures, you may see spike and wave on both sides because of the orientation of the electrical dipole. You can see it on both sides. So you need to have get more clinical history to be able to identify whether this person has left occipital or right occipital seizures. You will also need to look at the interictal EEG, meaning EEG done between seizures to see if there are any lateralizing features. Okay, what do you see here? So something that is striking is there is an asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. So left hemisphere is the channels that end with an odd number are recording from the left side, channels that are ending with an even number are recording from the right side. So if you look over here, so this is the left side and this is the right side. So you can see asymmetric slowing and sharp waves. So you're seeing this slow activity that is here and you're seeing some of these sharp waves that are here. So this is suggestive of an abnormality in the right hemisphere. You want to rule out a structural abnormality. So this person definitely needs imaging if you do not have an MRI in your facility, you should at least get a CT scan. An ideal test would be an MRI of the brain. When you do an MRI of the brain, make certain that you're doing it with seizure protocol. What that means is normally when I request an MRI in a person with epilepsy, I request coronal flare images through the hippocampus as well as axial SWI images. 
SWI stands for Susceptibility Weighted Images and those are done that sequence especially good for looking for blood products. What about this last slide on our presentation today? Again you see an asymmetry between the left and the right hemisphere. The left hemisphere in this case shows asymmetric slowing. You can see a lot of asymmetric slowing which is persistent on the left hemisphere. So you can see the left hemisphere over here. Compare the left with the right and then compare left side with the right side. And you can see that there is an asymmetry and persistent slowing in the left hemisphere. So when you have a persistent slowing you think of a structural abnormality so this person will also need imaging of the brain. The other thing to consider is if the imaging comes back completely normal another explanation for asymmetric slowing is a post ictal state. So immediately after a seizure so presuming if this person had a prolonged seizure coming from the left side of the brain the left hemisphere now is slow which could be a post ictal finding. So this is the end of the tutorial today. Thank you for your attention and I will appreciate if you can in the comment section if you can give me suggestions for future videos.